Do you believe in the power of young leaders who captivate global attention and intrigue? The story of Captain Ibrahim Traore mirrors those remarkable individuals who have sparked fascination worldwide. Captain Ibrahim Traore, a young leader, took the world by storm as he assumed the role of transitional president and head of state. In a remarkable turn of events, Burkina Faso welcomed a new era of leadership on October 21, 2022. At just 34 years of age, Ibrahim Traore defied conventional expectations, emerging as the youngest head of state on the global stage. He was sworn in as Burkina Faso's transitional president and head of state, an appointment that has raised many questions. Not only did Traore take the reins of the nation's presidency, but he also assumed the title of Supreme Chief of the Burkinabe Armed Forces. With a military background, he possesses a unique blend of skills and charisma that has propelled him into a position of unparalleled authority. As the world watches the youngest serving president, we can't help but wonder, how did Captain Ibrahim rise to power? What lies ahead for Burkina Faso and what kind of leader is Captain Ibrahim Traore truly destined to be? And what motivates this young visionary to lead a nation? And what path has he walked to reach this position of power? If you are eager to unravel these answers, brace yourselves as we are going to dig deeper into the story of Captain Ibrahim Traore and journey back into 2022 when Captain Ibrahim rose to power. Humble Beginnings Ibrahim Traore's journey began in the heart of Burkina Faso, a nation steeped in a rich history and marked by a complex political landscape. Born in Kiera, Bondokui, Muhun province, around the year 1988, Traore's early life was characterized by an insatiable thirst for knowledge and a natural talent that distinguished him from his peers. After completing his primary education in Bondokui, his quest for knowledge led him to a high school in Bobadulasso, where he earned a reputation as a quiet, yet exceptionally gifted student. It was during this period that his profile as a quietly determined and remarkably talented individual began to take shape. In 2006, Traoré embarked on a journey of higher education, enrolling in the geology program at the University of Ouagadougou. During this time, he was involved in both the Association of Muslim Students and the Marxist Association Nationale des Étudiants du Burkina, ANEB. Within ANEB, Traoré quickly rose to the position of delegate, gaining recognition for his commitment to advocating for his fellow students during disputes. His academic journey culminated in a remarkable achievement he finally graduated from the university with honors. However, this was just the beginning of his intriguing story that was set to inspire and grab all the eyeballs from around the globe. Military career. As soon as he completed his education, Traoré's smooth journey took an unexpected turn when Ibrahim Traoré decided to take a different path, one that would eventually lead him to the military he decided to join the army of Burkina Faso in 2009 and underwent training at the prestigious Georges Namoano Military Academy. Subsequently, he was sent to Morocco for specialized anti-aircraft training, acquiring valuable skills that would later serve him in his military career. Upon his return, he was assigned to an infantry unit in Kaya, a town located in the northern region of Burkina Faso. Ibrahim Traoré's path to leadership and his growing disillusionment with the state of affairs in Burkina Faso showed his unwavering commitment to serving his country. In 2014, a significant moment in Ibrahim Traoré's life occurred as he was promoted to the rank of lieutenant. Little did he know that this would mark the beginning of an extraordinary journey that would shape not only his military career, but also propel him to the role of the youngest serving president in Burkina Faso's history. His journey took a compelling turn when he decided to join MINUSMA, 
a United Nations peacekeeping force deeply involved in the Mali War. During his time with MINUSMA, Traoré's unwavering dedication and exceptional courage in the face of adversity drew the attention and admiration of his peers and superiors. In 2018, Traoré's remarkable courage and dedication came to the fore when he was recognized as one of the Minusmi soldiers who displayed exceptional bravery in the face of major rebel attacks in the volatile Tombuktu region. This experience, far from his homeland, reinforced his commitment to peacekeeping and international stability. However, his heart remained with Burkina Faso, and he returned to assist in critical operations against the escalating jihadist insurgency that was spreading its shadow over the nation. His valor on the battlefield became evident as he actively participated in numerous counter-insurgency operations. In 2019, Ibrahim Traoré's military career took a significant turn as he was stationed in the northern region of Burkina Faso. During this time, the northern parts of the country were grappling with a severe and ongoing insurgency. Traoré's assignment to this volatile region placed him in the midst of a complex and dangerous conflict, exposing him to the realities of the insurgency's impact on the local population and security dynamics. The consequences of the insurgency in Burkina Faso were dire. By late 2021, a full-fledged humanitarian crisis had emerged, affecting many parts of the country. The insurgency's impact was felt keenly by the civilian population, with around a quarter of Burkina Faso's people facing food insecurity. The insurgency disrupted the agricultural and economic activities of the affected regions, leading to severe food shortages in many areas. Food shortages became a common and distressing reality for the local population. Insurgent activity disrupted traditional farming and trade routes, making it challenging for communities to access essential supplies. Additionally, the presence of these armed groups and the insecurity they created hindered humanitarian organizations' efforts to provide much needed aid to affected communities. The insurgent groups active in northern Burkina Faso had affiliations with international extremist organizations like the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. This added an extra layer of complexity to the situation. The presence of such groups not only threatened the security of the region, but also raised concerns about their potential to radicalize local populations and exploit existing grievances. In such complicated situations, Ibrahim Traoré played a key role as a military officer. Not only this, he also participated among other challenging operations. Notable among these were his contributions in Jibo, and his significant role in the Otapuanu Offensive of 2019, as well as several other crucial missions in the northern regions of the country. In recognition of his dedication and leadership qualities, Traoré received a well-deserved promotion to the rank of captain in 2020. Yet, it was during this time that he began to experience a growing sense of disillusionment with Burkina Faso's leadership. His discontent stemmed from what he perceived as a widespread lack of essential equipment and resources for Burkinabe soldiers. Simultaneously, he observed disheartening instances of politicians allegedly distributing suitcases of money for corrupt practices while the soldiers on the front lines faced critical shortages. In response to these concerns, Traoré gradually assumed the role of a spokesperson for the frustrated soldiers stationed in the north. His voice represented their collective dissatisfaction with the government's handling of vital military matters and became an integral part of his evolving journey towards the highest office in the land. Ibrahim Traoré's experiences, from international peacekeeping missions to battling insurgents on home soil, provide a glimpse into the complexities of his military career and the evolving perspective that has shaped his leadership as Burkina Faso's youngest serving president. Rise to Power Ibrahim Traoré's journey took an intriguing turn 
when he became part of a group of army officers who supported the January 2022 coup d'etat in Burkina Faso, ultimately bringing the patriotic movement for safeguard and restoration military junta to power. This critical juncture marked a significant moment in his military career. Following the success of the coup, Traoré's career took a new direction. From March 2022 onwards, he assumed the role of heading an artillery regiment stationed in Kaya, further solidifying his position within the military hierarchy. While Ibrahim Traoré's military career is marked by significant achievements and roles, rumors about Ibrahim's association with the Cobra Special Forces emerged at this point of his career. This particular unit, founded in 2019, plays a crucial role in counter-terrorism efforts. Therefore, the association sparked several controversies. Yet, there are conflicting accounts regarding Traoré's involvement with the Cobras. Many sources, including reputable outlets like BBC, Al Jazeera, and Die Tageszeitung, have suggested that he was part of the Cobras at some point, emphasizing his involvement in this specialized unit. On the contrary, news magazine Jeune Afrique have refuted this claim, asserting that Traoré was never associated with the Cobras. Questions naturally arise. Was he, indeed, a part of this elite counter-terrorist unit, as suggested by some sources such as BBC, Al Jazeera, and Die Tageszeitung, or, as reported by news magazine Jeune Afrique, was he never linked to the Cobras? The precise nature of Ibrahim Traoré's involvement with the Cobras remains a subject of dispute and intrigue. It adds a layer of mystery to his already intriguing journey from a coup supporter to a military leader within Burkina Faso's evolving political landscape. Dissatisfaction and the coup in Burkina Faso. The January coup in Burkina Faso which brought the patriotic movement for safeguard and restoration military junta to power, initially garnered widespread support. However, as time passed, many coup supporters grew increasingly dissatisfied with the performance of the junta's leader, Paul Henri Sandaogo Damiba. The primary cause of discontent revolved around Damiba's perceived inability to effectively contain the escalating jihadist insurgency, a grave security concern for the nation. In the period when Lieutenant Colonel Damiba briefly held power in Burkina Faso, the nation witnessed a troubling escalation in attacks by militant Islamist groups, some of which had affiliations with major international extremist organizations, including the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. This surge in violence presented a significant security challenge for the country and had profound implications for its territorial control and governance. As the militant groups expanded their activities, they managed to gain control over significant portions of Burkina Faso's rural areas. This territorial expansion posed a direct challenge to the government's authority and its ability to maintain law and order. Some estimates indicated that the state was gradually losing control with only about 60% of the country remaining under its authority. These acts of violence struck fear into the population and disrupted daily life. The challenges posed by these security threats underscored the need for a strong and decisive response, which kept Ibrahim Traoré committed to providing as he assumed the presidency. His leadership was shaped by a determination to restore security and stability in a nation profoundly affected by the presence of militant extremists. Ibrahim Traoré, who played a pivotal role in the coup, shed light on the internal dynamics of the junta. Traoré revealed that he and other officers had initially attempted to persuade Damiba to refocus on addressing the rebellion, urging a stronger commitment to the cause. However, it became apparent that Damiba's ambitions were diverging from the original objectives that had galvanized the coup supporters. This growing rift ultimately led to a decision to overthrow Damiba. Notably, 
The dissatisfaction with the junta's performance was most pronounced among younger officers, who had been directly engaged in combat against the rebel forces at the front lines. Their first-hand experiences and deep commitment to the mission made them particularly sensitive to the evolving priorities and strategies of the leadership. As events continued to unfold, issues regarding delayed pay for the Cobra troops, a crucial counter-terrorist unit, began to emerge. The delay in their compensation added to the mounting grievances and frustrations within the military ranks. On the 30th of September, the plotters launched their coup, and it's worth noting that at that time, Ibrahim Traoré still held the rank of captain. The operation to overthrow the existing government was executed with the support of the Cobra unit. In the immediate aftermath of the coup's success, Traoré made a significant move by declaring himself the new head of the patriotic movement for safeguard and restoration. Moreover, on the 6th of October, he assumed the position of interim president, taking on the titles of head of state and supreme head of the armed forces. These swift actions solidified his authority and placed him at the helm of Burkina Faso's transitional government. In an initial address to the nation, Traoré made a promise that resonated deeply with the public. He pledged to organize democratic elections, offering hope for a peaceful transition, with a proposed timeline for these elections set for July 2024. From the complexities of addressing delayed pay for troops to the precision of executing the coup, Ibrahim Traoré's journey gives an intriguing insight into Burkina Faso's ever-shifting political landscape. Now at the helm as the nation's leader, the realization of his commitment to restoring democratic governance holds the key to the country's future. Presidency. In his role as Burkina Faso's president, Ibrahim Traoré has maintained a distinctive and enigmatic presence which is characterized by a reserved and highly formal demeanor. This reserved nature was, interestingly, a trait for which he was already known even before ascending to power. It appears that Traoré deliberately seeks to convey a carefully crafted image, one that embodies the qualities of a decisive and proper war leader. This choice may be rooted in an effort to avoid the negative public image that had plagued some of his predecessors. Notably, Traoré has exerted a tight control over his communication and public appearances, reflecting his commitment to projecting an image of steadfast leadership in a nation grappling with security challenges. His presidency has also witnessed a notable increase in pro-government propaganda, both in traditional Burkinabe media and on social media platforms. This propaganda serves as a means to disseminate the government's narrative and maintain a strong grip on the information landscape. In a surprising move, in February 2023, Traoré's government decided to expel French forces that had been essential in assisting Burkina Faso in countering the local insurgency. This bold action marked a clear shift in the nation's foreign policy direction indicating a pivot away from established partnerships and potentially signaling new geopolitical alignments. Following the expulsion of French forces, Traoré's government articulated a clear intention to explore new international horizons, emphasizing the pursuit of mutually beneficial partnerships. This signaled a strategic shift toward diversifying Burkina Faso's international relationships. Shortly thereafter, Traoré's administration expressed support for the idea of a federation involving Burkina Faso, Mali, and Guinea. All three countries were under military leadership, and such a union would potentially result in the largest nation governed by a military junta, with the need to fill the void left by the departure of French military support. Traoré embarked on the path of forging closer ties with Turkey and Russia. These emerging alliances marked a significant realignment of Burkina Faso's foreign policy, creating new geopolitical dynamics in the region. In April, as rebel forces continued to escalate their attacks, 
Traoré declared a general mobilization of the population to bolster the military's efforts. He publicly pledged to retake all areas held by the rebels, asserting that negotiations with the insurgents would not occur until their strength was significantly diminished. However, in the subsequent month, Traoré raised questions about the planned restoration of democracy in 2024, suggesting that elections could not proceed until the insurgents had been pushed back and the overall security situation improved. This stance underscored the prioritization of security concerns as a prerequisite for a return to democratic governance. Ibrahim Traoré's leadership, marked by his evolving diplomatic strategies and unwavering stance on security, showcases the dynamic nature of Burkina Faso's political landscape. His ability to navigate these complexities and steer the nation forward in the face of insurgent threats and internal unrest will significantly shape the country's future. In terms of political influences, Traoré has been described by Le Monde journalist Sophie Daus as being inspired by Marxism and Pan-Africanism. These ideologies have likely played a significant role in shaping his approach to governance and decision-making, and they serve as notable hallmarks of his presidency. Involvement with Russia, allegations of connections between President Ibrahim Traoré and the Russian mercenary organization Wagner Group have stirred significant debate. These suspicions have arisen due to Traoré's expressions of anti-French sentiment and apparent pro-Russian inclinations, as reported by Reuters and the New York Times. But the question that arises here is, do these expressions truly link him to Wagner Group, a group notorious for its shadowy operations? Upon his arrival in Burkina Faso's capital, Ouagadougou, during a moment of triumphant return, supporters cheered, and some even waved Russian flags. This outward display of support for Russia raised eyebrows and further fueled speculation about the nature of Traoré's international relationships. The government of Ghana publicly alleged that Traoré initiated collaboration with the Wagner Group after the coup, enlisting their services against the jihadist rebels. However, Traoré vehemently denied these claims, instead asserting that Burkina Faso's version of Wagner is the Volunteers for the Defense of the Homeland, VDP. This leaves us to ponder whether these allegations are accurate or part of a broader geopolitical narrative. Then, in a surprising turn of events, on July 29, 2023, Following the 2023 Russia-Africa summit, Traoré declared that his country's people support Russia and announced the decision to reopen the Russian embassy, which had been closed since 1992. This step raises the question of whether Burkina Faso is indeed forging new alliances in the international arena. According to reports by Le Monde in May 2023, it appeared that, for the time being, the Traoré regime was favoring the use of its own forces in the fight against the jihadists without requesting assistance from Wagner's Russian mercenaries. This raises a question. Is this a calculated move to maintain sovereignty and handle security concerns with native resources? The allegations, declarations, and actions surrounding President Ibrahim Traoré's international relations and potential affiliations raise intriguing questions about the true nature of these connections and the evolving dynamics in Burkina Faso's foreign policy. Failed coup. On September 26, 2023, a significant and audacious coup attempt unfolded in Burkina Faso, targeting President Ibrahim Traoré this coup was staged by dissatisfied elements within the military. The exact motivations and grievances of the coup plotters were not immediately clear, but it was evident that there was discontent within certain factions of the armed forces. Reports revealed that four officers have already been arrested, while two are yet to be found. The dissatisfied military elements sought to overthrow Traoré's government 
viewing it as inadequate or unresponsive to their concerns. The specific grievances and demands of the coup plotters were not immediately made public, but it was apparent that they believed a change in leadership was necessary. In the face of this coup attempt, Traoré demonstrated a resolute and determined response. He refused to yield to the coup plotters' demands and rallied his supporters and loyalist military units to defend the government. Traoré's decisiveness in resisting the coup was emblematic of his commitment to maintaining stability and upholding his presidency. President Traoré addressed the nation in a public statement, denouncing the coup attempt and declaring that he would not surrender to the plotters. Loyalist military units, as well as his supporters, quickly mobilized to protect Traoré's government. The coup attempt resulted in clashes between the dissident military elements and Traoré's loyalist forces. The loyalty of these forces played a pivotal role in quelling the coup attempt. Ultimately, the coup attempt against Traoré was unsuccessful. His unwavering response and the support of loyalist military units ensured the preservation of his presidency and the constitutional order. Personal life one cannot help but wonder what Ibrahim Traoré's personal life looks like. Many people ask if he is committed or married. However, it appears that Ibrahim Traoré is an extremely private individual who isn't ready to disclose his personal details as of now. Ibrahim Traoré's decision to keep certain aspects of his personal life hidden and private likely stems from a combination of factors. As a prominent political figure, and the president of Burkina Faso, Traoré is undoubtedly aware of the potential security risks associated with divulging personal information. Public scrutiny and constant attention to personal matters can hinder a leader's ability to make crucial decisions and steer the nation effectively. Therefore, Ibrahim Traoré has kept the details about his early life family and personal routines concealed so as to help safeguard both his own safety and that of his loved ones. It's not uncommon for leaders in volatile regions to maintain a level of anonymity to reduce the risk of targeted attacks. Keeping his personal life hidden could be a strategic choice to maintain an air of enigma and formality which has become a characteristic of his presidency. This calculated image projection may align with his political objectives, presenting himself as a focused and decisive leader. While maintaining a private personal life may contribute to Traoré's security and governance focus, it has also created a degree of mystery and curiosity around him. Public image and perception. Traoré's public image is marked by a mix of curiosity, hope, and cautious optimism. His youth and the circumstances of his rise to power have attracted global attention. Since Trior is one of the youngest serving presidents in the world, this has drawn considerable attention both nationally and internationally, with some viewing his youth as a potential source of fresh perspectives and progressive ideas. Traoré's leadership style has been characterized as enigmatic and highly formal. He has maintained a reserved demeanor which has added an air of mystery to his public image. This enigmatic style may be a deliberate choice to convey an image of decisiveness and formality, possibly in response to the poor public image of some of his predecessors. Traoré came to power following a period of political turbulence, including a coup and increased militant attacks. His leadership image is intrinsically tied to his ability to steer Burkina Faso through these challenging times. People's perceptions of him are influenced by his effectiveness in addressing the country's issues and managing crises. Traoré has been described as being influenced by Marxism and Pan-Africanism. This political ideology has likely shaped his approach to governance and decision-making. Those who align with similar ideologies may view him favorably, while others may have concerns or reservations. While President Ibrahim Traoré has received commendation for his leadership, 
Some political observers argue that he has yet to deliver tangible, transformative changes that would secure strong public approval in Burkina Faso. Achike Chude, a Nigerian public affairs commentator, emphasizes the need for Traoré to establish enduring foundations that can serve as pillars for a lasting legacy. The question that emerges is whether Traoré can effectively address the pressing challenges he identified when he took office and create a positive, impactful change in the lives of Burkina Faso's citizens. Traoré's leadership has indeed been marked by the promise of progress, but turning these promises into reality is a different challenge altogether. To truly earn strong approval and build a reputable legacy, he must address the key issues that have burdened Burkina Faso, such as security concerns, economic stability, and social well-being. Concrete actions, implemented with precision and transparency, will be essential in demonstrating his commitment to improving the lives of his people. As observers await the concrete outcomes of Traoré's presidency, the ultimate judgment will rest on his ability to translate rhetoric into effective policies and initiatives, fostering a brighter future for Burkina Faso. His success in this regard will determine the lasting impression he leaves on the nation and its people. This brings us to the end of our video. His life story and political career is a tale of determination, resilience, and mystery. What do you think of Ibrahim Traoré? Do you think he is the best choice and can ensure a brighter future for Burkina Faso? Or is he walking the footsteps of his predecessors? Can ye prove his credibility and worth as a new leader? We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. On that note, we are wrapping up today's video. If you enjoyed today's insights, give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video with your friends and family who would love to know more about Ibrahim Traore and his life.